is as for a normal crime. Just because you wear an Agbada and so on doesn't mean that you can commit criminal offenses and get away with it. Everyone who commits these, these crimes must be dismissed, prosecuted, and jailed. I didn't hear you clap for that. <laughs> for attempting to steal the people's mandate. The political party should also be punished. We cannot allow people to rig and then rerun the election. No! You have, if Armstrong rigged, took drugs, he was, he didn't rerun his, 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 uh, his cycling races, he was dismissed. And number two became number one. We should have that system here. If they say uh, uh, policy is a sport, then let's treat it like a sport. If you cheat, you are dismissed. Number two becomes number one. If number two is faulty, it becomes gross, and number three becomes number one. And that is what should, that will clean it up overnight. Overnight, you'll get a clean, clean, clean slate. Next slide, please. Next slide. I will leave this out. Well, we, we, they talk about election malpractice and political malpractice. You send children to jail for 21 years for electoral malpractice. For political malpractice, they, uh, let's do a rerun. Uh -huh. It's not supposed to work. And we must not allow it to work. We must not allow it to work. Solar power. We all know our problems with solar, with, with power. Nigeria does not want to go solar. Why? England is going solar without ten, with only 10% of our sun. We don't want to go to so, go solar because they want us to continue to buy and to pay for meter. That's all. That's the only reason. So let us fight for a solar Nigeria. And the CBN can set aside two million dollars, two billion dollars to fund that, and you repay over five or ten years, and everybody will be okay. Really, you won't fund everything, but at least so you won't serve everything in your house, but you will serve some of the items. Next slide, please. Medicine. There is a terror in medicine. I'm in medicine. I must tell you, there are some terrors there. What country graduates doctors and doesn't allow them to do house job for two years? That's a terror. Male nurses often masquerade as doctors. That's a terror. Every single clinic now is a specialist hospital. That is a terror. And auxiliary nurses are always already claiming to be fully trained. That is a beautiful terror. Because some of them are beautiful. <laughs> Delivery is the most dangerous day in the life of a mother and baby. Men cause terror by sending women to rubbish maternity and mission centers for hard labor. Of course, death can come in the best of hospitals. But hospitals are for delivery and missions are for deliverance. <laughs> Unless you can prove that they have proper medical facilities. If men got pregnant, they would all be usage nowhere else or other hospitals that are, that are good to high standard. Surely delivery is worth investing in. Men, is delivery worth investing in? Yes. Is your wife worth investing in? Yes. Are your children worth investing in? Yes. Then cancel the party and spend the money on the delivery because there will be no party if the delivery doesn't go well. Yes. Yes. As a medical student, I delivered my first baby in about 1972. Many babies are born screaming, some are born silent. Drenched in the blood of any of these thousands of deliveries that I've been fortunate enough to take, I always ask what will become of this child. Today there are adult terrorists. They must have been babies once. Held by me and you, your midwives. Held by mothers. What went wrong in their lives? We don't know. But in your local area, you can't blame Abuja when your local government, made up of people from your own state, your own people, put a nail on your road, a nail, nail uh, uh, block of wood, and, and try and stop it from driving because they want to extort money from you. That's not Abuja terror. That is you, mano on mano, that's your own terrorist, your own community, brought up by your own people. So these are the problems. Next slide, please. We've mentioned Western taxes. We take license without consequence, power without responsibility, and we fight elections without morals. You in this room are corruption survivors. You know you have breast cancer survivors. We have other survivors, road traffic survivors. We now have a group called corruption survivors. We are still alive in spite of the corruption. 
I've said a murderer when arrested will stop murdering. Next slide, please. The greatest anti-terror weapon is the mind. The best anti-terrorist weapon is the vote. Nigerians expect to be res respected by politicians. And we're happy that the, the um, national the, um, conference has approved diaspora voting. But we don't know whether it will get through the rest of the approval process. Next slide, please. In Nigeria, instead of horse trading, we have baby factory and body parts trading. And it's politicians and people with money who buy these things. And we have never found one politician who's been arrested. Have you noticed? They've never found one big man who has been arrested. A man is carrying 16 heads. And there's a downfall there with blood in it. To one chance. And they arrest the man and they never find anybody else. It's very, very frightening. So these are the terrors that we go through. We swim against the tide of corruption or we, or we accommodate it. I myself have been fortunate to report a few checkpoints in Ibadan. And I was arrested by a certain security agency for that because they said, this is the one who's been reporting us. Oh yes, yeah, be truthful. I won't mention them because they know themselves. But we must all do something about it. And that's why I said, if you cannot speak out, then shoot a photograph of the corruption and name the place like Oshotoku Junction and then send it to channels. Things will start to change. But if you say, leave it to me, I leave it to Edmund, Edmund leaves it to Chief, nothing will remain on. Have you noticed how those undergoing trial for political criminal offenses are always unfit to stand trial? But they were not unfit when they were chopping the money off. Next slide, please. Next. This is a poem I wrote in, for, in, in honor of today's event. In politics in 2014-15, it must be said that there should be no bloodshed. No one injured or left for dead. No exchange of lead. No giving of a goat. Just an honest willing vote. There should be no more theft or there will be nothing left. Next slide, please. I've been blessed to have the good fortune to spend many time delivering thousands of babies and I belong to many NGOs including Educare Trust. I will let you into a secret today. Professor Ayobanjo is the chairman of Educare Trust and he has done a wonderful job leading us. I believe he deserves a round of applause. And there are many wonderful people here who are also members and supporters of Educare Trust. I'm not embarrassed them by asking them to wave their hands. I have also been maligned and insulted and I've struggled against Samanda Airport neighbors because I have a lowly government approved Educare Trust Center, youth center, in the midst of their magnificence and they're upset. But I will warn us that people who fear the youth, instead of embracing them and molding them, will allow the youth to go their way and they will not be responsible for what happens in future. We must harness and, 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 and take care of these youth. We abandon them at our peril. Nigeria's children deserve better. Nothing can bring back a dead child, dead of ignorance or corruption. Answer the last question on the list. What language has a name for a parent who has lost a child? You have orphan, you have widow, you have widower. If you lose a child, what do they call you? It is so painful that they can't give it a name in many languages. That's where we're talking about. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. There is terrorism within organizations. Next slide, please. In conclusion, I know you're so happy now. A round of applause for the conclusion. Hallelujah! In conclusion, political terror and corruption are the landed tsunami drowning our youth and all of us. There is enough only for the needy in Nigeria and not enough for the greedy. A country which fails its children through political hypersalaries and massive stealing has failed the test of civilization. Politics must divorce itself from the error in terror and corruption and our children. Nigeria needs a rallying call. Stop corruption today, just stop. And the dividends will grow into a lifetime of anti-corruption. In final conclusion, as we face the terror of Boko Haram to, fill our, to free our girls and stop the terror, let us chant, and I wish you to chant this, one year of integrity 
One year, one year, one year. Please say it. One year, one year, one year. And turn to your neighbor and applaud our terror and corruption survivors. Applaud each other, please.
Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome to this occasion Mrs. Atinuke Adetunji. You're welcome. That is Tima Konde's first daughter. Aren't she beautiful? I also am seated by the CEO of Tima Konde, Bola Konde. Can you please stand up for recognition? There is also Chief Akonde Jr. He is Bio Akonde. Thank you for I also have the granddaughter of Chief Bio Akonde, Mufe Adituji. Can you please? She's shy. She's shy. That's Grandpa's baby. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a time to make your comment. You listen to the lecture. Dr. Mariho talked on error in terror. I guess you have some points to raise. Please one house, one house. As a follow-up on this lecture, I want to draw your attention to this. The RAND Corporation reports that since 2010, that the number of jihadists in the Middle East has increased by 58%. The number of extremist fighters has doubled, and the number of attacks by Al Qaeda has tripled. It is happening also in the West African sub region. Therefore, as globalization of terrorism reaches a new high, the West African region, where Nigeria sleeps giantly, stands the risk of being destabilized by terrorists. Mind you, the West African region revels in manufacturing unrelated poverty and ill governance, and these are the tools for the growth of terrorism. Join me on Voices on Saturday, 12 July. Thank 
So we must say thank you for coming, Mrs. Splash, Miss Splash. Do you have anything to say? All right, Mrs. Splash, do you have anything to say? Thank you for coming. All right, thank you. Thank you, Miss DJ. Now let me introduce the Chief Wale Akin Wale, the Osio Osimba logo of Ibadan. Thank you for coming here this morning. Now it's time. I'm going to take one here, yeah, one from this role, one from this role, one from this role, one from that role. Remember, make your comments very brief. Very brief. Very brief. So we start from that rule. Any question or comment from there? Okay, nobody there. Okay. Please make it brief. Brief, straight to the point. My question is this. My question is this, or oh, let me call it a comment. This is the best of Ibada, and this is Stranger Door. I can actually count the number of lectures I've actually received in this same hall concerning corruption, corruption, corruption. And still, there is no difference. And the question is, why? I've asked myself severally, but I've not been able to get a conclusion. And I'm asking you today, why have it been a different? Thank you. Okay. There's someone, okay, there's this young man here. I saw this young man first. Thank you. It's not just only a good time, Mr. President also made a comment like it. It's still in. Okay, let's move to this role. I need a Okay, there's a lady there. Take there's a lady there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That microphone, are you sure that microphone is okay? Thank you. I, when Dr. Morio was talking, he was... not to be a victim. 
And how can I, as a person, not be a victim to this terror that we have on the road? Because we have them every day. And they always try to mitigate life out of people. So my question is, how can I, as a person, not be a victim to the terror on the road? Thank you, sir. Sorry, yes. The chairman, the first terror I suffered was the absence of Opilo. <laughs> as a veteran broadcaster myself, I thought that um, it shouldn't have been dead to it like that, but to suffer the, I mean, to please the terror inflictors. <laughs> I have to now for a few weeks in order to, in order to face his studies. But aside from that, I will be grateful if um, Arivo will tell us about uh, uh, yeah. If we are not being terrorized by allowing people to be put in office by ICP, by ICPC without declaring their assets publicly on television, radio, and newspapers to say, yes, I have two million, and I have thousands, and I have this and that. Nobody ever knows what they have. And this kind of thing, I believe, is silent volcanic terror. Thank you. Okay, guys, that board. We just have to take two more questions. And I hope somebody there. Distinguished uh, residents of the high table, permit me to borrow that from the speaker of today. Um, Olomo Dosi Adekwe from the media field. Many uh, forms of terror have been cited today, and um, I want to say a big thank you to the speaker for a job well done. But very recently, on the, on the social media, I came through this advert, most especially on the Facebook, inviting young Nigerians to be part of the association of the uh, unemployed graduates. Now, when we look at unemployment, we realize that both the academia and um, the social scientists and even so -called, our so-called leaders have uh, implicated that um, unemployment is responsible for the violence we are having in our country today. Menace, the menace, and all forms of um, social menace. What I'm trying to say here is that is it not time for the government of That's Nigeria to declare a state of emergency in the unemployment issue in Nigeria instead of declaring state of emergency in places where unemployment are being responsible for the things that are happening in that environment. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 